responded to Philip Crowther. Uh, after Thursday's drawn-out emotion, expediency uh, seems to be the word of the day. Yeah, Republicans are trying to get this done as uh, quickly as possible. That doesn't mean that they won't have a debate first. They are, in fact. That's happening right now. Started this morning. It will, it will presumably go all the way to 1.30 p.m. here, local time, 7.30 Paris time. That's when the whole Senate Judiciary Committee will be voting on whether or not to forward the nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the full U.S. Senate. It is true that Republicans are trying to get this done as quickly as possible. They are negating any attempts from Democrats and they're being made right now uh, in this uh, debate in, uh, at the Senate for an FBI investigation. Uh, Republicans don't want this to happen, and they do want to get this uh, Supreme Court justice confirmed as quickly as possible. And the quickest is, in fact, probably going to be on Tuesday. There's going to be a few more procedural steps to be taken, but then we will arrive at that most crucial of votes. It's very likely right now and almost uh, inevitable that uh, Brett Kavanaugh will make his way out of the Senate Judiciary Committee. There are 21 senators on that committee. 11 of them are Republicans, 10 of them are, are Democrats. The one swing vote in there was going to be Jeff Flake, the senator from Arizona. He has since put out a statement saying that he is going to vote yes on Brett Kavanaugh. That's why we expect this to be pretty quick and uh, move on to the full Senate as early as Tuesday. Yeah, so the Republicans moving it to the full Senate and the Democrats expressing their bitterness. Let's listen to California Senator Dianne Feinstein. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle have gone so far as to say this whole situation was nothing more than a nefarious attempt at political theater. I was shocked to see Judge Kavanaugh take the same tone and strategy. In the 25 years on this committee, I have never seen a nominee for any position behave in that manner. Judge Kavanaugh used as much political rhetoric as my Republican colleagues. And what's more, he went on the attack. Two questions from that, Philip. Uh, first of all, have any opinions changed in America? And secondly, what is going to be the lasting impact of what we witnessed Thursday? There's a very big and uh, very heavy questions uh, because, of course, there is an impact coming from what Christine Blasey Ford said in her testimony in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. She came forward and admitted and recalled what happened to her. She says with 100 percent certainty it was the nominee for the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh, who attempted to rape her. She explained in graphic detail she was crying at the time. And maybe this will lead to more women who have been sexually abused to come forward. We certainly know that during her testimony, there were more, more calls to hotlines uh, from women who were uh, finally uh, felt able to admit what had happened to them, maybe finally recalled what happened to them in more detail because they were watching this testimony. But of course, after that, Brett Kavanaugh came out swinging and got Republicans on his side. So a lot of people, of course, will also be asking themselves this question, is it really worth it? Does anything change? In this case, nothing did change. Christine Blasey Ford uh, did make her allegations in public, but it didn't change what she wanted to change because she didn't believe, she believed she had a civic duty, she didn't believe that Brett Kavanaugh was the right person to have a spot on the Supreme Court uh, for a lifetime. And what you heard there from Dianne Feinstein, the ranking Democrat member on the Senate Judiciary Committee, well, it, some of it is simply true. These are simply facts. Uh, what Brett Kavanaugh said during his opening statement was political. Uh, he did say that he believed that what was happening to him uh, was a con game, uh, using the words of the U.S. President Donald Trump. He believed that it was orchestrated by Democrats and that it was revenge for the election of Donald Trump. That's not the kind of language you expect to hear from a Supreme Court nominee, but these are extraordinary times, and this was an extraordinary day yesterday, a very, very ugly and contentious one. And that tone is continuing into today, into the debate that's happening right now, by that same committee uh, that you saw yesterday. Just very briefly, Philip, you yourself watching that, did you feel like you were discovering a different Brett Kavanaugh from the one we saw at the beginning of the month? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was very, very different to what we saw earlier. Uh, as one commentator said uh, during his first uh, hearings, 
he was a Republican nominee. Yesterday, he was a Trumpian nominee. He spoke like a Donald Trump nominee for the Supreme Court. And there's no surprise there because he had been practicing for this in the White House, with White House staff, with White House lawyers for this crucial testimony. He was aggressive. He went after Democrats. He went after the media as well. These are all things we know uh, from U.S. President Donald Trump. Brett Kavanaugh came across as angry, very angry indeed, emotional as well, something that he didn't show in his Fox News interview from a few days prior. So, yes, this was a completely different tactic by him. But, of course, we also have to remember maybe it wasn't all a tactic. This is a man who has gone through a very, very hard time. He has been accused right relatively credibly, but he has been accused of sexual assault. And of course, his family has been through a lot. Uh, that's, that explains the tears that he showed in front of the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee. It was hard to watch yesterday. Uh, these were very raw emotions, and it was very, very contentious as well. And we'll be talking